I am Prof. S. Radha from School of Advanced Sciences, VIT Chennai. Now let us see an introduction to group theory. Introduction In abstract algebra, group theory studies the algebraic structures known as group. Other algebraic structures such as rings, fields and vector spaces can also be seen as groups but endowed with some additional operations and axioms. Applications of group theory The group theory and the very closely related representation theory have many important applications in physics and chemistry. In physics, groups describe the symmetries and in chemistry, groups are used to classify crystal structures and symmetries of molecules. Algebraic geometry and cryptography likewise uses group theory. In combinatorics, the permutation group and the concept of a group action are often used to simplify the counting of a set of objects. Before going to the definition of group theory, now let us see what is the solution of the equation a into x is equal to b. You have any idea? Now let us go to the definition and come to the equation later. A set G along with the binary operation star is said to be a group if it satisfies the following axioms. Number one, closure. That is for all A comma B belonging to G, you should have A star B belonging to G. That is, if you consider two elements of G and when it is operated by a binary operation star, then the resultant should also belong to the same group G. Associativity for all A comma B comma C belonging to G, if A star B star C is equal to A star B star C, then elements of G are said to satisfy the associative property. Identity if there exists an element E belong to G such that A star E is equal to E star A is equal to A then E may be called as the identity element that is E fixes all the elements of the group, E fixes all the elements of the set G. Inverse, for all A belongs to G, if we could find an element A inverse belong to G such that A star A inverse is equal to A inverse star A is equal to E, the identity element, then A inverse is called the inverse of A. This should happen for all the elements of G. If all the four axioms are satisfied, then G comma star may be called as a group. Now more, we can see something more. Let us come to the definition of a semigroup. A set G and a star is said to be a semigroup if only the two first two axioms are satisfied. There is closure and the associative property. Let us, come, let us see one more definition that is monoid. A set G is said to be a monoid if it satisfies closure, associativity and if it has an identity element. That is the first three axioms of the definition of a group should be satisfied for a set G to be a monoid. Now let us see some examples. The set of negative integers under the binary operation dot is not close. For example, if you consider minus 2 and minus 3 and if you use the binary operation multiplication, then minus 2 into minus 3 will be plus 6 which does not belong to the given set G. So hence it, hence it is not closed. The set of vectors of unit magnitude under addition is not closed. Uh, if you consider two unit vectors and if you add those two unit vectors, the resultant vector may not be a unit vector. Addition and multiplication of real numbers is associative, but subtraction and division of real numbers is not associative. The set of natural numbers under addition do not have identity, identity 0. The set of integers under multiplication do not have the multiplicative inverse for all elements. For example, for the set of integers, if you consider a particular element A, the multiplicative inverse of A will be 1 by A, which does not belong to the set of integers. 
Now we are again back to the equation what we have seen it earlier a star x is equal to b. Pre multiplying by a inverse on both sides we have a inverse into a dot x is equal to a inverse into b. Again we are using the associative property now by clubbing a inverse into a together. We have e dot x is equal to a inverse into b. Now here comes the identity. As we know a inverse into a is the identity. Again we are using the closer property and we are writing x is equal to a inverse into b. So for solving a equation we are using all the four axioms of the group. Now let us see some examples of groups. The set of integers z forms a group under the binary operation plus if you consider the set of integers um, 0 will be the additive identity for any integer a minus a will be its additive inverse more or less addition of two integers is always be an integer and uh, integers always are associative. The set of non-zero rational numbers forms a group under multiplication. Uh, for example, if you consider any rational number, um, multiplicative identity will be 1 and for any rational number a, 1 by a will be its multiplicative inverse. The set of all n by n matrices under matrix multiplication and addition always forms a group. Now let us see another type of group, one specialized group called the abelian group. We are all familiar with the commutative property, right? Definition, a group G comma star may be called as an abelian group if it satisfies the commutative property. That is, for all A comma B belonging to G, you should have the property A star B is equal to B star A. If this is satisfied, then you can say the group G is commutative, sorry, the group G is abelian under the operation star. Usually we can say the usual multiplication and addition are always commutative operators. Some examples of some abelian groups. The set of integers under the operation plus is always abelian. The set of all matrices that is n by n matrices under the operation plus is always an abelian group. But one thing to be noted, if you go to the set of all n by n matrices and if you are having the operation as matrix multiplication, then it may not be an abelian group as we know very well that matrix multiplication is not at all commutative. Let us continue again. Let us meet again with some more specialized groups. Thank you.